Give me one moment. Baba Kusha. All right, Shalom. I'm thankful. I'm grateful to be able to come out here once again to preach and to prophesy unto my people, being you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And according to the Holy Bible, you are the Israelites. All right? And this is about your father's genetic line. It's about agnet relations. Okay? Because your race is determined off of your father's genetic line. Okay? Give me a second here, man. It's negative five degrees out right now. But I'm going to do what I can for you. How about Shemi Awashai? And for the church. Okay? And as always, you know, I have to, uh, you know, I'm going to kind of just get to the point since it's so cold. But as always, I have to give all thanks and praises unto our power, the power of Israel, not the power of any other nation. All right. And what's his name? Yahweh. Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Bahasham Yahweh Peace, blessings, much respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. On down to the rest of the elders who rule well within Israel. Salutations to the hopeful elect throughout the four corners of this whole entire earth, no matter where, whom they may be, or what they may look like, pushing out this purified truth to the rest of the church you believe as well. You men who may not be teachers or prophets, you women, sons, and daughters also. And the water to Yahweh Shai, because without him endearing and going to that cross for the nation of Israel. And the nation of Israel alone, none of this would even be possible whatsoever. All right. Uh, let's jump right into it. This is the book of Luke, chapter 10 and verse 16. He that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despiseth you, despiseth me. And he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. So, brothers. Anyone have a problem with us, they got a problem with Yahweh Shai. If they have a problem with Yahweh Shai, that means they got a problem with the Heavenly Father. Okay? We are put in a position of authority, whether these people want to acknowledge it or not, whether people want to acknowledge that or not. The Lord set us in a position to push this word. This word is a serious matter. Anyone who has a problem and an issue with that, you have to take it up with our power. He that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despiseth you, despiseth me. And he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. All right? And that's the order. Let's jump to Jeremiah chapter 25 and verse 4. And the Lord hath sent unto you all his servants the prophets rising early and sending them. But ye have not hearkened nor inclined your ear to hear. So as much as we come out here, our people do not want to acknowledge or consider what we have to say. And it's not even our words that we're speaking. You hear our voice, you see our face, but we're speaking the words of the Lord unto you. All right? The words of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. And the Lord has sent unto you all his servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them. But ye have not hearkened nor inclined your ear to hear. So although our people don't listen, as cold as it is, I still come out here. Because obedience is what the Lord is looking for. All right? This is how we show that we love the Lord. You think Yahweh Shai wanted to go to that cross? Absolutely not. 
but he endured that. He suffered that. Before I came out here, I was literally in my head getting mentally ready <laughs> as if, you know, I was about to be facing life or death or something, right? But it made me ponder on what Yahweh Shai had to have felt moments before getting put on the cross. You know, you're just in your mind trying to get yourself ready for that moment. Because when I was in my mind trying to get ready to come out here, trying to get ready and endure this coldness, I was like, man, you know Yahweh Shai, he was in the flesh just like us. And, and just like a man, he stood on it. And just as the man that we're trying to be, okay, we have to stand on this, man. We have to be about this. All right? Even when people don't want to listen to us. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So we're bringing out the words of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai in hopes that our people will learn. But our people, for the most part, they don't want to listen to the words of the Lord. They don't want to hearken. But that's no excuse to not come out here. Okay? For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. So there's no excuse. You can't say, oh, well, that's biblical times. We don't live in those times now, right? We're still in biblical times. The things that were written back then were actually written more so for us today than they back then who we are reincarnated, okay? Period. Whether you believe it or not. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. So we come out here, preach and teach this word, so that the elect of the nation of Israel can have hope. And Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. We have expectations. And with all the hell and all the things that we go through, we understand at the end of it all, there is a reward. This is Romans chapter 11 and verse 28. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for our sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. So guess what? The majority of this world, they hate us. But Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai has set aside an elect that when they hear this word, they get uplifted. They get inspired. Them hearing this word it's like someone who's real thirsty, who just got done um, coming back from a long journey, a long run. His esophagus is dry and you give him an ice cold drink and he's going to, you know, drink all of it. The elect are going to drink all this truth. The elect are going to be comforted by the words written in this Bible. But the majority of our people is just how it has to be. They're enemies for the truth that we're speaking. We're liberated from these people in terms of we're not like them. We're free from sin. Okay, although we still sin, we are made a different creature through Yahweh Shai, and these people cannot understand it. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 9. For I think that the power hath set forth us, the apostles, last. And to be an apostle, that means you were sent forth. The Lord has sent forth the men you see out here teaching and preaching last. So everything else that was set up, who our people put faith and confidence in, that failed them. Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai waited till the very end. To raise up his prophets once more here in these end times before he brings that ultimate close. For I think that the power hath set forth us, the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. 
For we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. So we are made a spectacle unto the world. And me being out here in the cold, negative five degrees, people looking at me like I'm crazy, like I'm a spectacle. But this is for uh, the elect's sake. And I'm hoping I'm a part of that. I'm hoping I could be delivered. I'm hoping my works aren't in vain. Which means what? We have to endure. Which means what? That has to be already written for us. Okay? What's done is already done. What's going to be is already going to be. Who you are is already who you are. Alright? Verse 10. We are fools for Mashiach's sake. So this may look foolish to the majority of people. We're fools for Yahweh Shai's sake. But this is what it requires. Uh, this is what... This is what's required of you if you want the kingdom of heaven. You have to be willing to look foolish. You have to be willing to suffer. Go through the burdens of coming out here in the cold, man. I'm in the negatives right now. But I want that reward. I'm trying to sit in the kingdom with Yahweh Shai. That's what I want. Okay? And I'm not a perfect man. You know? I'm not the most worthy man. In fact, I'm not worthy at all. But that doesn't mean I don't want the reward. <laughs> and I'm not going to try to the best of my ability to do what I can to receive that reward. You know, who wouldn't want to receive the reward from the man? Yahweh Shai himself. You know, that's who I look up to. As a man in this world, is pretty dry to me. These celebrities don't move me. They don't move me at all. They don't really make me feel any type of way. But Yahweh Shai, man... That's the guy right there. That's who I want to be like. And that's who I thrive to be like. And that's why I'm willing to come out here as cold as it is. It's, it's hella cold, man. Like, taking this off my face just for a second, breathing in through my nostrils, it's like my nostrils are just drying up. We are fools for my we are fools for Mashiach's sake. But ye are wise in Mashiach. So although we, we look foolish, this is really the wise thing to do. What is more wise than to please the Lord? What's more wise than being obedient to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai? We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. So although we are weak, we're strong. Through Yahweh by Shemi was shy. Okay, although we're we're made an enemy to a lot of people, we're actually loved in high places, man. We're actually loved by the Lord's elect. Okay. Second Timothy's chapter four and verse two. Preach the word, be instant. In season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So we have to do this work in season and out of season. So I may look foolish. A lot of people may see what I'm doing as a waste of time, as useless. They may feel like they have better things to do than to want to see what some snowman is talking about. Which is totally fine. Okay? I'm willing to look like a fool for you. I was shy. I already gave up my life a long time ago. I already knew what I signed up for. And when I signed up for it, <laughs> I didn't sign up for it. The Lord signed me up for it. Okay? Because we don't, we, don't, we don't control our lives. Okay? Preach the word. Be instant. In season, out of season. So we have to do this all throughout our life, man. We have to do this all throughout the year. All right? There shouldn't be no time period where it's been two, three weeks. No one's seen or heard from you. You're not doing the work. Okay? What are you doing, man? And then you might say, oh, well, I was doing the work, but I didn't have no camera. That's between you and the Lord. Okay? If you're doing the work, you're doing the work, right? 
But at the same time, why wouldn't you have a camera? See, the scriptures also talk about doing the work deceitfully. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. And right now it's out of season. Right now it's in the negatives. Negative five between negative five and negative six is what the dashboard was saying. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And yes, I'm suffering. But you know what? That's also part of the doctrine. It was already told to me that I was going to suffer. Okay? I'm not some super strong Judite. I'm a Jew who needs help. And the Lord has been helping me. So I'm good. I'm grateful to be able to come out here and serve the Lord. I'm grateful to be able to come out here in the cold and endure this. Okay? This is amazing to me, man. That the Lord actually has me doing this. This is a miracle to me. Because even the, the, the things that the Lord has me doing, not just you brothers and what, what I see y'all doing, just the works that the Lord has allowed me to do, it's like, wow, man, there's no way Yahweh by Shemi Shai is not real. It, it just wouldn't make no sense for a man to want to do something like this on his own will. That, that, that wouldn't make sense. Second Timothy 4 and 3, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. So people want to hear, hey, you don't got to go out and teach when it's too cold out. You know, just take that little time off, man. You know, go home, go, go play a patty cake with your wife, right? Go take your, your, your family out on a month vacation. You know, work a whole bunch of overtime at your job. Collect your money. You know, just, just take that time off, man. It's cold out there. If somebody said that, a lot of Israelites will cling to them. Like, I know that's right because it sounds easy. It sounds doable, right? Because you don't want to suffer. You don't want to endure the real battle, the real fight. And this flesh is our biggest opponent. Okay? Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. So through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemi Shai, we faint not. We got to teach this word in season, out of season. We can't faint. We can't go back in the cut and be like, oh, it's too cold. Because there's a whole bunch of demonic activity still going on right now in the cold. It ain't stopping nothing. So us who claim to stand up for Yahweh by Shemi Shai, you need to be bringing your ass out here. Even when it's cold, once you put your hand to the plow. Okay? Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Okay? But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Not walking in craftiness. Not telling you, hey man, take a break, it's cold out here. You don't got to come out here and do the work. Right? Right? You can cut corners. Hey, I know a shortcut to the kingdom, bro. Nah, we ain't teaching in craftiness, man. Nor handling the word of the power deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth. And that's what it's about, man. John 8 and 32 tells you that ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. But by the manifestation of the truth, Commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of the power. Okay? So we're not out here trying to handle the words of Yahweh by Shemi Shai deceitfully. And that's why me and men like myself are willing to come out here even when it's cold because we're not coming out here with some ulterior motive. 
We're not coming out here in, in wickedness trying to deceive you to get you destroyed by the Lord. We truly care about our people. We care about our salvation. Overall, we care about Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 3. Blessed be the power, even the Father of our Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, the Father of mercies and the power of all comfort. That's how I'm able to do this. Because I'm comforted. And through the scriptures, we bring out these words, we read it out loud openly in hopes to uh, enlighten the minds of the elect. Because the elect will hear this word when the time is right and it will be profitable unto them. Because this word and the elect was meant to be joined together. Grace be to you and peace from the power. Our Father, my bad, this is verse 2, I meant to read verse 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 3. Feel my forehead melt, or uh, not melting, could feel my forehead freezing off. You know? I love this, man. I, it, it, it's not comfortable being uncomfortable, but I love knowing that the Lord is so fair, you can only imagine what he's going to do when we have to go through certain things. It's like, man, you know, if we endure, I mean, what is what is Yahweh Shia waiting for us on the other side, man? Hell yeah! <laughs> yeah! All right? <laughs> Blessed be the power, even the Father of our Lord, Yahweh Shia Mashiach, the Father of mercies and the power of of all comfort and I'm comforted right now yeah it's cold but I'm comforted okay I'm comforted man and you brothers and you sisters out there you should feel comforted too if you really believe and you'll grow thereby okay let's go to the book of Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 10 moreover he said unto me son of man all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart and hear with thine ears and go get thee them of the captivity unto the children of thy people and speak unto them and tell them, thus saith the Lord power, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. So look, it's cold as hell. More than likely, like a lot of other times, people aren't going to really listen. It doesn't matter. We have a job to do. And the job is called obedience. Okay? The job is obedience. The Lord wants us to do what he asks us to do. Okay? If you have a dog, like for myself, my dog, right? One of my dogs, she's always trying to like lick on me and get all in my bubble when I don't necessarily want her to. So I'll be like, you know, stop, you know, you know, leave me alone or whatever. And there's just moments she don't want to stop. It's like, look, I'd rather you just fucking do what I asked you to do. I don't need uh, the emotional content. <laughs> OK, I don't I don't need all this extra affection. I need you to fucking listen and do what I'm asking you. The Lord is looking for obedience. He ain't looking for hugs and kisses. He ain't looking for, hey, man, you know, I don't, I don't use profanity. Yeah, man, you know, I, I don't, I don't uh, curse in my house. Well, I don't give a fuck. The Lord wants obedience. All right? So whether our people listen or not, for those of us who put our hand to the plow, we got to do our part. We got to do what we were uh, told to do okay there's a reward coming what what's the what's the problem man what what's the problem we have a reward <laughs> yeah it gets hard though but you, you know you, you gotta laugh to keep from crying you know 
Ezekiel 3 and 11 again. My eyes is watering. Forehead feels like it don't exist no more. <laughs> you got to imagine in the kingdom, sitting amongst Yahweh Shai and the rest of the elect and talking about just some of the things we had to endure. Man, that's going to be, that's going to be, man, that's going to be awesome, bro. Shit. Like, like, you know, like a lot of Edomites be saying, that's awesome, dude. That's going to be awesome when the Lord uh, breaks off his, his, uh, his friends that reward because his friends do what he asks, right? The friends are going to be obedient. And go get thee to them of the captivity unto the children of thy people. Speaking to you uh, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. I'm out here for you. I'm out here freezing for you. You don't care, <laughs> right? You, you don't care about the Lord's servants. You don't care about our existence. You don't care about our health, our safety. You don't give a shit. And, and that's all right. That's, that's totally fine. <laughs> and tell them, thus saith the Lord power, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Look, Lord, you know, it's cold out. No one's really going to listen. I'm going to take a break. Is that cool? You think he's going to be in the heavens? Like, you know what? You, you got a point. They're not going to listen to you. So, you know, just take the time off, man. There ain't no fucking time off. All right? Period. I got this uh, video playing on YouTube in the background. I hope you brothers wasn't listening to it the whole time. It's just uh, brothers teaching. Hope they don't cause no confusion. It might have been uh, really low where it wasn't heard, but... It was um, the picture in picture on the corner of my phone because I have my YouTube playing. All right. <clears throat> so whether our people hear or forbear. The Lord said, get your ass out there and teach. All right. Imagine you. You know, you being a young, a young child. And your father, he tells you, he says, hey, son. Go in the house. And call all your siblings. And whoever's in there. You know, tell them to come out. You go in there. And you start calling your siblings, whatever their names may be. You might have, let's say, three siblings. You call in their names. Nobody's answering. You call in their names. Nobody's answering. But your father, the whole time, he already knew nobody was in the house. He just wanted you to be obedient and do what the fuck he asked you to do. <laughs> Even if you didn't, you didn't come across any of your siblings, the mission was to go in that house, call for any siblings who may be in there. If they're not in there, they're not in there. You did your part, right? We're doing our part. And being obedient is a major work in this truth. You want to get far? Be obedient. Do what the scriptures say, man. Just live it. Don't be no studio prophet. Live this, man. You got to actually live this, man. And, and, and if it don't feel comfortable, then you're doing the right thing. <laughs> Ezekiel 37. In verse 9. Look, I'm looking forward to a kingdom. I'm looking forward to rule, man. I want to sit on the throne. All right. I want to sit on the throne. I want to rule. I want to rule in righteousness with Yahweh Shai and the rest of the elect. That's what I want. And I'm willing to suffer for it. And you have a lot of men, they don't really want to suffer for it because they don't want it that bad. 
I want it. Okay? And I hope and I pray Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai keeps this spirit on me, man. Because I absolutely believe in Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Okay? Absolutely. And I, I'm thankful to be in this ministry. I'm thankful for you true, sincere brothers out there, man. And let me say this too. A lot of you brothers, I may not be on your, your uh, page commenting on your videos, but I'm watching your videos and I'm being edified. I'm hitting the thumbs up. You know, I might be at work. I might just be meditating, just taking notes, you know? But uh, I'm not um, so out of touch based off of, you know, you're not seeing me really respond to different brothers' pages. I'm watching brothers' pages, man. I be tuned into brothers' pages incognito style, man. You never know when I'm going to pop up. Just like a pimple that pops up at the most inconvenient moment. I'll be watching your page. I may or may not respond. Most of the time, I may not even respond, but I'm being edified, okay? I'm not watching brothers' pages for brothers to make a mistake or... Or for, or for brothers to, uh, I'm not, I'm not on brothers' pages with any ill intent. I'm on brothers' pages to learn, to be edified, to be built up myself, man. Okay? But I don't always comment in different things like that. And then when a brother's live is on, I'm the type, if I see your live is up and I might come 30 minutes into it, I rewind the live and watch it from the beginning a lot of the times. Anyway, getting off topic here. So whether people are listening or they're not listening, the Lord told us to get out here and teach this word. Ezekiel 37 and 9. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind. Thus said the Lord power, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. And the slain is speaking of our people. But we're out here prophesying unto the wind. My voice is going out into the wind right now, which means what? No one's really forbearing. No one's really listening. But the Lord said, go out there and do the work anyway. No excuses, man. And you have a lot of men trying to push a spirit that when it gets so cold, you know, you ain't got to come out here. So if it's cold, if it's extremely cold for a whole month, you just going to disappear off the streets for a whole month? Hell no. I ain't trying to do that. I'm trying to do my part. I'm trying to be with your whole shot. <laughs> I'm feeling good, man. I'm just, I'm just feeling good, man. I got joy in my heart, you know. And we're at, we're at the end. We go through what we go through, but at the end of the day, man, the reward is close. The reward is close. First Peter's chapter one and verse two. Elect according to the foreknowledge of the power, the Father through sanctification of the spirit unto obedience. So it's all about obedience, okay? The sanctification of the spirit and obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. So the elect are going to be obedient. It's about being obedient to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Not coming up some other way. Not creating your own path, but coming up the way Yahweh Shai said to come up. The straight way. The difficult way. Okay? 1 Samuel 15 and 22. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. 
For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and adultery. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he had also rejected thee from being king. So this was said to Saul. All right. Rebellion is witchcraft. So to be disobedient to Yahweh Ba Shemi Shai, you're a witch. And a penalty for being a witch is death. Right? So all you Israelites who disappear when it gets too cold, and you're in camps. You're in camps, five, six guys, and you're talking about it's too cold, but yet you got each other to kind of help huddle up and bring that body heat. I'm out here by myself in the spirit of Yahweh by Shemi Shai to say you can't go too far serving the Lord. We can't do enough, man. Yahweh Shai was on that cross in pain for us, man. And he wasn't um, hooting and hollering. He took it like a man. Okay? You can learn from that. Because I know I have. All right? No matter how much it hurts, man. I want the kingdom of heaven. I want to be great. I want to rule. I want a throne. I want to rule the universe with Yahweh while Yahweh shine. All right? I want an abundance of women. I want spiritual power. I want an immortal body. I want everything that was promised to me. That's what I want. Okay? And anyone who's not thinking like that, we are not the same. Okay? For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity. So when it comes to you stubborn Israelites, you got something coming. All right. Because thou has rejected the word of the Lord, he had also rejected thee from being king. So that was speaking to Saul. But overall, any of our people who are rebellious to the word, you're a witch. And the Lord is rejecting you. Second Thessalonians chapter three and verse 13. But ye brethren, be not weary in well doing. So, yeah, it's cold right now. But I'm not weary because I'm doing this for the Lord. I'm doing the right thing. I'm not out here gang banging. I'm not out here selling uh, uh, drugs to my people, right? I'm out here teaching the words of Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai. I'm not going behind men's back popping their wives, right? I'm not out here uh, being a goddamn pedophile or a child molester, man. I'm serving you. How will I show me? I will shy to the best of my ability. Okay. But ye brethren, be not weary in well doing. So don't feel bad about doing what's right. And if any may, and, it, <laughs> and if any man obey not our word by this epistle, no, that man and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. So anyone who is disobedient to the word of Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai, we're supposed to separate from them. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, Note that man and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. So this truth is about division. Now we love our people, but that doesn't mean we need to necessarily come together because we have two different belief systems. Okay? Although you're still our people. Okay? Psalms 95 and verse 6. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. 
for he is our power. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice. So just like Yahweh Shai had told his disciples, his sheep will hear his voice. The Lord's true believers are going to hear these words and be inspired to be moved by it. They're going to do what it says. Okay? Harden not your heart as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. So don't be stubborn. That will get you put to death. That's being disobedient. Not coming out here because it's too cold. Believe it or not, once you put your hand to the plow and you decide to take a break because of it being cold, you're being a witch. You're being stubborn. Okay? You're letting the flesh have dominion over your spirit. Okay? Matter of fact, where the hell's my cocoa at? I done left my cocoa in the car, man. I could have been sipping hot cocoa right now. <laughs> when your fathers tempted me, proved me and saw my work. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said it is a people that do err in their heart and they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. So the majority of Israelites have always had a rebellious mentality to Yahweh. Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Going all the way back to the time where we were in uh, Egypt. Okay? Back during the time of Moses. Okay? All the way up until now. You always had a bulk of our people, a huge bulk, the majority of our people who were just disobedient. Let me be wrapping this up soon, man. Woo! Second Chronicles 36 and 15. And the Lord power of their fathers sent to them by his messengers, which are the angels on earth, the prophets, rising up betimes and sending because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers. Look at that stupid ass nigga. He in the cold. What's he doing in the cold? Wearing a dress. Looking like a snowman. That nigga must be on, on a crack pipe, man. I didn't even know they still smoke crack. What he doing? But they mocked the messengers of the power and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no remedy. So our people, they going to keep being rebellious, talking their shit till the day that the Lord's like, you know what? That's enough. I'm about to beat your ass now. Now it's time for you to be judged. And that's the time we're coming into. Damn, man. Woo. Psalms chapter 52 and verse 6. The righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him. So yeah, people mocked the prophets. Uh, that was Psalms 52 and 6. I don't know if I said that or not. I'll read it again. Psalms 52 and 6. The righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him. So although a lot of people mock and scoff at the prophets, the day is going to come where we're going to mock and scoff at all you non-believers. Okay? Going ahead and cut this short. I'm going to end it with this. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. Be not deceived. The power is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So all you people who think what I'm doing is a joke, you think it's a waste of time, you think there's no point, it's useless, why would I come out here in the cold and just stand out here looking silly? It's for you, how will buy some of y'all shot. The power of heaven and earth, man. Okay? You have to be willing to suffer for the Lord. And suffer for the Lord, it's really not as bad as you would think it would be. Because he's with you the whole time. He gets you through it. So it's almost like it's a cheat sheet. 
It's like you're, you're, you're being told you have to suffer, but at the same time, the Lord's holding your hand the whole time through. <laughs> you know? So what's there to worry about? The Lord allowed me to get this far, and I'm glad I could uh, come out here and uh, teach and preach this word once again, but I'm going to go on ahead and wrap it up. I got to get home where it's warm. So I'm going to give all thanks and praises unto our power, the power of Israel, not the power of any other nation, all right? And what's his name? Yehovah, Bahashem Yehovah Shai, Bahashem Yehovah Kakudash. All right, Shalom, I'm out.